I'm gonna make a bold statement here. This is by far the easiest loaded antenna I have ever used in terms of tuning and changing bands and all that stuff. This thing is freaking sweet. I just made 34 contacts in 38 minutes on six different bands with this JPC-12 antenna. I'm gonna show you all about it this time on Ham Radio Tube. So we are here at the same location that I did my little rainy day POTA activation. I brought my 705 out because I just wanted to use my 705. But this weird company called Goozy Zoo emailed me and asked if I'd be interested in trying some of their products and they sell this JPC-12. I'd been curious about this antenna. Honestly, I was a bit skeptical, but this thing is freaking awesome. So you can get this on Amazon. I'll leave a link, but I just want to show you how cool this antenna is. Like it's a, it's a center loaded uh, vertical. So here's your coil. It's got, it's got an SO239 in the bottom here with a little adapter and some radials. These come as like a ribbon wire, you gotta separate them. One of the first things I was wondering is can you just leave all the wires like connected on that ribbon wire, but no, it didn't, uh, didn't work too well. So separate the wires, but this thing is so incredibly easy to set up, to use. It's clearly effective because I just used it on 40, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Made contacts on all those bands, no problem with 10 watts. So let me, uh, let me show you how I got it set up and, and uh, just talk about it and I'll show you how incredibly easy it is to tune. Because this is by far, I'm gonna make a bold statement here. This is by far the easiest loaded antenna I have ever used in terms of tuning and changing bands and all that stuff. This thing is freaking sweet. And the reason I was interested in this, I mean, look where I am. I'm in the, literally the middle of a forest, okay? So like there's trees and stuff. When I did my uh, rainy day pot activation out here, I was using an NFED and I managed to get it up, but like you can't get 40 meters of wire out here, you know, or you know, 66 feet. Like it's just not possible. But having a little vertical like this that's multi-band, Look, I mean, it's set up for 40 meters right now. I know the sun's kind of in the way, but it's just vertical. There's, there's the end of it right there, just straight up. That's it. So for like compact antennas that actually work for activations like this, where you're not sitting at a park bench, you're getting out in nature in the middle of a forest. Like this is what I love to do. And sometimes an NFED just ain't the secret. So let me show you how I got this set up. So here's what I really like about this. This, I, this whole thing, the whole antenna, I've got kind of all the metal bits and bobs here in the side pouch for the 705 bag. And then in the compartment here, you've got your radial wires, we've got the base, and then I also have the coil. And the way this works is you take this ground spike, so you can just stick it in the ground, comes with a death spike, and you're gonna use the ground spike to connect your radials with this little ring. And then you screw this into the base and you stick it in the ground. Then you just spread apart your radial wires. This is kind of the part that I'm not a huge fan of. These radial wires tend to want to do that. Big bird's nest. Uh, so, that's kind of the Achilles heel of this thing. It takes a little while to set up these radials because you got to untangle them. So I'm probably going to end up switching these out and just make radials with like poly stealth wire because it doesn't tend to kink up and not like this. But once you get them out, this thing works amazing. And I'm just like, I'm not really paying all that much attention where I put them. I'm just kind of throwing them out. So now that's done, let's show you the next part. Once you've got the base sorted, you've got these four aluminum poles that you screw together. Like everything about this, like this is, this is pure Chineseium, but I'm like, I'm really, really pleased with the quality of this thing. They just thread together, okay? So we've got the four poles. 
Then we screw the coil onto the rods that we just connected. Okay. And then all of this gets screwed to the base. And then you've got a telescopic whip. Now, one thing that you'll wanna do, and this is something that me and uh, my buddy Dave, KB5UTY did in my front yard. We were kind of playing around with this right when I got it and tuning it. So I made little marks with a Sharpie. They're kind of coming off right now. So I know where to tune this thing. There's only two taps that we need to use, really three, but they're marked on the coil. So then, so I know like if the tap on the coil is on 20 meters, I can just slide this whip down to where I've made the 20 meter mark and just instantly resonant on 20. If I wanna get on 17, I slide the coil all the way up, shorten this down to where I made the 17 meter mark. Now I'm instantly on 17 and so on and so forth. So let me show you like in real time how easy this is to do. Oh, and you do need to plug the coax in. That helps a lot. So here we go, just set this up. I'm gonna extend, I know that for 40, I'm gonna go this whole section down and then in a little bit, I just kinda know that. And then this little slide right here, there's markers on it. One down here for 20 or for 40 and one up here for 20. And this little slide thing has a little indentation that just kinda rides the, the wire there, the coil. So you just put it on that and let's go over to the radio and I bet you we're going to be in tune. Look at all those signals on 40. All right. So 10 watts on the 705. We're in CW. We'll watch the SWR. Let's minimize that. Look at that. Like nothing. Okay. So there's 40. Let's do the same thing for 20. So 20, we'll slide this up. And today, for some reason, for the ground conductivity, sorry about the shaky camera, guys. That's the mark for 20 right there. I'm going to go one tap below that. Make sure it's riding on there, okay? Then I'm gonna extend the whip to my 20 meter mark there, okay? Right there, so there's the mark. Just put that right there. Let's go back to the radio. Go to 20. Look at all those signals. Throw her in CW. Key up, look at that, 1.3 maybe, just like that, okay? Let's do 17, same thing. I'll put you down for this. 17 meters, you take this slide and just bring it all the way up, and then there's my mark for 17 meters. Go to C-dub. Look at that, 1.4 maybe? How fast is that? 15 meters. Now, here's where it gets different. 15 meters and higher frequency, we need to take the loading coil off. So I'm gonna take the whip off, take the loading coil off, we're not gonna use this. And now it's just gonna be, whoops, <laughs> a quarter wave vertical. So I've got my mark here for 15 meters. Just shorten the whip, screw this back in without the coil. All right. Watch this. Look at that, 1.5, 1.6. I can tweak that, hang on. Oh, you fell. Why'd you fall? I just shortened it a little bit. Let's see what happens. Eh, 1.5, why is it worse? Whatever, I was like perfect when I was doing my activation, but you get the idea. There was zero SWR 
when I was doing my activation earlier. All right, 12 meters. How's this for professional grade videography, boys? Oh, you know why? I bet because that coil, let's try, that coil was right near the, the counterpoise. I wonder if that had anything to do with it before I change it for, tw for 15. Nah, doesn't matter, whatever. I promise it was better. There, there's 15, look at that, no SWR. I had the whip in the wrong spot, my mark came off. What are you gonna do? But that's 15 meters, okay? Now we'll do 12 meters. I forgot where my mark for 12 meters was. There. I think that's 12 meters. The Sharpie's wearing off. Ah, we can do better than that. I don't think that's the right mark. Maybe I will have to edit some of this. Oh, there it is. Woo! Just barely. I need to put a new mark on there. That should be more better. Look at that. Done. And then let's do... 10 meters, that other, that other mark was for 10 meters. Which is all the way down there. That should be good. Look at that, 1.3-ish, something like that. And I'm literally just standing here, the camera's right here, Calling CQ, making contacts. We got, on 40 meters, I only got one contact, but it was 2.44 in the afternoon when 40 kind of doesn't work in Texas, apparently. But he is out, uh, I don't know where he was, but you know, some, some Envis propagation there. I got all the way up to Saskatchewan on 10 meters, uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, Indiana, like all over the place. 10 watts, some RG316 coax, and that's it very compact, very easy to use. Like, this might be my new favorite loaded coil antenna. It's easier to use than Wolf River coils. It's easier to use than the Buddy Stick Pro. It's probably just as good in terms of getting out, but the main difference for me when, like when Dave and I were setting this up, and Dave's probably watching this, so put a comment in, Dave, what our experience was like the first time we used this, it's just so easy. Tuning loaded coil antennas, you notice I don't even have an analyzer with me. I left it in the car. I meant to bring it, but I forgot. Who cares? Don't need it. I tuned it at home. I made the marks where the bands are on the whip. You only need to fuss with two taps on the coil. They're pre-marked. Now, I've used this at home. I tried it at Huntsville State Park, and now I am at Sam Houston National Forest and Sam Houston National Forest Wildlife Management Area. It's a twofer and did have a little bit different results, but it just, it freaking works. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It also comes with a handsome carrying case that's got all the, the little straps and things for you to actually, like if, if you don't wanna do what I'm doing and just throw it in your bag, it does have a, a, a pack, uh, a case where everything fits in nicely. There's a little zippered pouch to put your coax and things like, they thought of everything. I kind of thought this was just like a knockoff of the uh, the Buddy Stick Pro, but with ground-mounted radials. It's not. It's a, it's a, it's its own thing, and I really, really like it. I'm surprised at how much I like it. So that's kind of my review. Um, maybe at the end of this, I'll put some contacts if you want to watch that. But links in the description to Amazon. I, I don't know how much these are, 150, 180 bucks maybe, no clue, but I'll flash it uh, on the screen right here so we can all know. And I'll leave an affiliate link in the description to Goozy Zoo's store where they can, uh, where you can pick one of these up. 
I like it. It gets the KMRD stamp of approval. And if you're interested in like a really easy to use loaded vertical antenna, center loaded vertical antenna, I, <laughs> I got nothing but good things to say about this. Other than the wire for the radials, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is really, really thin. So it packs down small. I mean, it honestly might've taken me three minutes to kind of get all the ground radials sorted out and untangled and stuff. And maybe with use, it'll kind of relax a little bit, but I doubt it. It's just the jacket catching on itself and, and tangling up and stuff. But I mean, for, for being out in the woods, emergency communications, which is kind of like my jam, that's why I got into ham radio, to be able to just be out in the woods stuff hits the fan, set up a quick antenna like this and be on the air and actually making contacts. The, the proof is in the pudding. So my name is Mike K and I'm already, thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time. November 5, Uniform, Quebec. November 5, Uniform, Quebec. Got you a five by two, five by two. I got about a three, 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 Mike. Kilo eight, November, Echo, Echo. Kilo 8, November, Echo, Echo. Dennis, how are you? I'm good, brother. I hope you all, I uh, hope your dad and mom are doing well. Uh, you are 5 and 7 in Western North Carolina today, Mike. Roger that. Well, the last time I talked to them, they were doing well, so hopefully they still are. I uh, got you 5 8 here into both parks. Roger, Roger. Tell them I said hey, and you be good, Roger. Kilo Echo 4 Zulu Golf. Back Juliet Victor. Was it Kilo Tango 4 Zulu Golf? Rod of the 5-8 Virginia, let's make it 5-8 both ways. Thank you, 73. Kilo Echo 9, Bravo Quebec Zulu. Kilo Echo 9, Bravo Quebec Zulu, thanks for another band, you're 5-5. Five, five. Kilo Echo 5-5, five, five, Mike, uh, you just dropped down to a 5-1, 51 <laughs> in Indiana, in November. Hey, I'll take, I'm pushing 10 watts here, so what can you expect? <laughs> no, you just bumped up to a 5-7, you found a better. Well, I like that one even better. Hey, thanks for hunting, and uh, we'll, we'll be on a few more bands. Kilo 7, Alpha Lima Whiskey. Kilo 7, Alpha Lima Whiskey. Thanks for the second band. You're 5x5. Five five. Uh, roger, Roger. You're 5'7. Five 5'7, seven. Five seven. Arizona, Alpha Zulu, QSL. Victor Echo 5, Romeo Echo Victor. Victor Echo 5, Romeo Echo Victor, got you 5x3, 53 in Texas. USL, QSL, I got you 5'2", 5'2", Saskatchewan, Canada. Copy the 5'2", Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, thanks for hunting at 73. Thank you, thanks for the video, 73. <laughs>